malleolar ankle fractures. This is our fourth in a series of four videos from the OTA Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series PowerPoint by Dr. Matt Graves and uh, I'm Saki Brahman. I'm narrating the slides and um, we've uh, now gotten up to the point where we're just going to briefly discuss some of the surgical goals, talk about outcomes, complications, and a few words about uh, diabetic fractures. So this will be a fairly short video compared to the, the last two. But let's get into it. So surgical goals um, arguably will uh, follow the AO uh, principles, uh, I think it's fair to say, which is um, uh, anatomic reduction of the fracture fragments at the joint, uh, stable internal fixation, preservation of the blood supply, and early active motion. Um, so uh, this essentially applies to malleolar ankle fractures. So it's just worth noting and to refreshing your memory about the main principles. So what about outcomes? Well, um, uh, Ken Eagle uh, had uh, reported in the JBGS 2006 that at one year following ankle fracture surgery, patients are generally doing well. Most have few restrictions and little pain. Uh, there is a significant improvement at one year compared to six months. And younger age, male sex, abs absence of diabetes, lower ASA class, that is for the uh, anesthesia uh, rating, are predictive of functional recovery at one year. Dr. Horsberger uh, reported in the GOT 2009 that fracture severity influences the rate of development and latency time to end stage ankle arthritis. And the occurrence of post op complications has a negative influence on long term results, not surprisingly. So the patient's age um, at the time of injury uh, correlated negatively with the osteoarthritis latency time. That is, if you're, if you're older when you sustain an ankle fracture, you're more likely to develop end-stage osteoarthritis sooner than if you had been younger. Specific findings in the history noted to have uh, adverse effects on outcomes include advancing, advanced age, osteoporosis, diabetes mellitus, peripheral vascular disease, disease, female sex, or a high ASA class. And we referred to some of these before. Social factors are noted to be independent predictors of lower physical function post-operatively, like smoking, alcohol use, lower level of education. This is reported by uh, Dr. Bandari's uh, group in uh, the journal Orthopedic Trauma 2004. So complications that are uh, perioperative include bowel reduction. You've seen some cases in the previous video of that. In inadequate fixation, intraarticular hardware penetration. Uh, early postoperative complications include uh, wound edge uh, necrosis, uh, rehiscence, infection, compartment syndrome. Uh, late complications include stiffness, uh, distal tib fib synostosis, malunion, nonunion. Post-traumatic arthritis, hardware-related complications uh, such as irritation of the skin um, and soft tissues and uh, complex regional pain syndrome or RSD. So let's just say a few words about diabetic ankle fractures because these are fairly common and they do present an, another set of problems in um, uh, the way of complications. So uh, both closed and open management of ankle fractures have higher complication rates. So you know, when you open them, you have a higher risk of wound problems. But if you treat them closed, you can have very poor outcomes. So it's kind of, you're going to have problems no matter what you do. So, I mean, how do you change the indications and goals of treatment? Well, you really don't change the indications that much. Unstable ankle fractures are definitely still best treated with anatomic restoration of the ankle mortise and stable fixation. But because the soft tissue complications are higher, uh, you have to be more careful. So increased care is given to atraumatic soft tissue techniques, elevation, be very careful with your incisions. Bone complications are higher, so you're offering it and you use more locked fixation, double stacked one third tubular plates, putting sort of so-called pro uh, tib fib, uh, I believe is the term, or essentially fixing from the fibula into the tibia. Um, like multiple syndesmotic screws is an option uh, to improve your stability. And post-operative care, you got to be a lot more careful. Healing takes twice as long, so you're often, oftentimes going to be non-weight-bearing. 
uh, a little bit longer and perhaps immobilizing them longer. So diabetics, you got to be careful. So just coming back to our, um, our objectives uh, for the first video, you want to make sure that with the completion of these uh, videos that you should be able to state the indication to fix the isolated fibular fractures to find the specific uh, articular pathology associated uh, with um, supination uh, uh, adduction and uh, um, pronation abduction fractures, list the three common posterior malleolar fractures, state the indication to fix posterior malfractures, and enumerate the ways to ensure syndesmotic reduction. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, there is an annotated bibliography here, and you can go through this. Um, also, if you go at the power, look at the PowerPoints at ota.org. Thank you.